but it says I'm live. Uh, it says I'm live. So get on in here. It's turned a different way. Y'all buckle up. Uh, give us a... Everything's going to be backwards. Anyway, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. There's nobody in here yet. I don't know what's going on. I've rebooted, re, I've rebooted my computer. I've updated the browser. It didn't need it. So I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. But hey, we roll with it around here. That's what we do. And that's what we're going to continue to do. And we're not going to let... We're not going to allow things to try to dissuade us from doing question and answer day because we got some good questions today. Yeah, we got some people in here. Restarted my phone. Yep, well, I'm doing this from my phone right now because something's going on with Restream or whatever. I can't. So for everybody that's in here that's on YouTube, somebody go over and tell the Facebook people that we're on YouTube and send a link. Send a link. So let's get started. Today is July the 27th. Love is the best motivator. I, I think that's just beautiful. Just beautiful. If you love me, you will obey what I command. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. This is from John chapter 14, verse 15 and 21. So, folks, get your calendars ordered. Look here. This thing is amazing. It's backwards because we're on YouTube. Uh, and I don't know how to turn it around. I used to know. Let's see. If... Nope, that's not going to work. Anyway, so get on in here. We got a bunch of questions. Where are the questions? Questions for July the 27th. Okay. We got questions. Have we got some people in here? We got 22 people in here. Let's get uh, let's get started with uh let's do our chaos to clean book. You know, our little chaos to clean book. Let's let's do day 27. What's for dinner? If you think about what's for dinner at 10 a.m., You'll, you will know the answer. Where is... You are really going to fly when you know what's for dinner. So get on in here, everybody. Next week, August 1st starts on Tuesday. August 1st starts on Tuesday. And we are going to... We're going to start Fly Lady Immersion Class, Fly Lady 101, uh, what, Back to Basics, Jumping Back on the Bandwagon. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's going to be a lot of things. And this just seems so close to my face. Maybe that's a little better. Yeah. It was not backwards. Well, thank you. Well, it was backwards for me. Well, I'm not on my platform that I usually use for everything. So, get on in here. We still only have 34 people in here. I don't know what's going on. Send everybody from F Facebook over here. Send everybody from Facebook over here. And I don't know why that... Okay. It's fine, Marley. Yeah. Well, stuff happens. And I just have to take a deep breath and calm myself down and not cry. You know, everything works every day. And then all of a sudden today, it's not working. It works twice a day. Sometimes we just have to not get... Not get all in a chaos. You know, that's what, 
That's what the evil one wants us to do. Just give up. And I'm not, I'm not the type of person that gives up. Ask my son. Ask my sister. I don't give up. I don't give up. In fact, I get more determined the more things go wrong. It's the timetable that gets me that I want to I want to be on time. And I was here and ready to go at 11 o'clock and push this go. And then it stopped for three seconds. It stopped for three seconds. Right after three, four seconds. I was live for four seconds and then I wasn't live anymore. Okay, folks, get on in here. I hope everybody finds us. I, let's see, Laura just put a link on Facebook. Thank you so much. Um, Justin put a link, Justin or Patty put a link on Facebook because it'll get seen by everybody. Anyway, I got some questions. I also have some headlines here. Justin's been sending me headlines and I've been printing them out. Tuesday, we're going to start. August has 31 days. July has 31 days too. And we're going to take we're going to have immersion class. We're going to get some things done, and we're going to talk about things that are stumbling blocks. We're going to give you some tips and tricks and, and some fun things to do that's going to keep you focused on your routines. And we're also going to talk about the things that are, are stumbling blocks that, that just like my brows are not working this morning. You know, this isn't fun. When these things happen, I don't I don't know if it was the browser or restream or what it was, but hey, let's get started on our questions. Get your calendars ordered. August will be here before you know it. Get them ordered. Questions for today. Number one, greetings. I'm wondering how to clean blinds and how do I get the dust and grime off of them? Well, the dust and grime just happens. But I would start with closing them all the way, one direction, and taking your multi-wand dry. You heard me right. Because if you spray water on that dust on those blinds, you're going to make it worse. So we're going to have to wipe the blinds with your multi-wand, then flip them the other way and wipe the blinds with your multi-wand. It's kind of like a windshield wiper. Looks like a windshield wiper to me. And then, and, and this is not taking them down. This is not taking them down. Then take your multi-wand and go either all the way up and then all the way down with it. And just keep. Somebody says, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I I don't have a microphone. Even though I have a microphone on, it's going to my computer. And I'm just speaking into my phone right now. Just speaking into my phone. So go up and down. And then turn them the other direction and go up and down. And then you can take your purple rag, your gray rag, your blue rag, whatever rag you've got. And blue and gray rags are going away, so get them while you can and get it damp and then wipe them down going one direction and then turn them the other direction and go the other direction and you'll have clean blinds if you take them down and put them in the shower you're gonna have a bigger mess and you're not gonna like it you're not gonna like it because it's just not gonna be fun and sometimes it's just too much but put it in place and take care the sound is good sister says the sound is good okay that's how you clean blinds. And then when you're in that room for the zone, like now we're in the living room. This week we're in our living room. Let's see if I need to turn that light off. That's a little better. I don't know. Anyway, so don't try to do too much more than you can handle. So clean them in place. If you do a swish and swipe on the blinds a little every day, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And if they're really nasty, 
You may need to just go buy a new one. I think they're about 10 bucks, but I haven't bought, I don't have any blinds in my house for that exact reason. Okay. Would you tell us how to use a multi one and how is it different from the Fly Lady Feather Duster? Well, I kind of just did that, but we're going to do it again. The multi one is, I can't get it all in the picture. It's probably around 24 inches. This part is around 18 inches, I think. And this cover actually comes off. It's a little pillowcase for the for the multi one. And when this is wet, it really cleans windows good. When it's wet, it cleans cars. It cleans blinds. But I wouldn't wet it to clean blinds first. Do the windshield wiper technique, up and down, sideways. But these little fingers are grabbing tools. Just like our feathers are grabbing tools, this, this thing works. You just got to put it in your hot little hand and use it. So just try it. It's, we, the multi wand is in our complete pack, which is the, the best deal we've got in the fly shop. It's over 50% off. So let get it now. Last night I was watching uh, Oasis Church and it's Pastor Tim Sheets. I watch him every Sunday morning. He is an amazing, he's a quiet and loving man. He's just, just a, a beautiful soul. But we've been anointing borders. Y'all have seen me anoint a map with borders. I put some anointing oil in a, a, a bottle, of a fingernail polish bottle. So it's got a little paintbrush on it. And he said that we've been doing a great job of anointing uh, the borders of our states, of our cities, of our counties. But now it's time to anoint our homes, our doorways in our homes the top of the doorway, the sides of the doorway. And if you read Exodus, you talk, there was Passover. But anointing the entrance of your homes, praying over it, pray Psalms 91 over your home and anoint those doors. Well, this next question, could you please teach us how to anoint our home with anointing oil? Is there a recipe for anointing oil or a place to buy it that you trust? I feel led by the Holy Spirit to protect and bless my home. Well, you can just take olive oil and say a prayer over that olive oil. You can take, um, I buy bottles of anointing oil, just a bottle of anointing oil. It's, it's, this smells like roses. But you can buy anointing oil from Israel on Amazon, and I have a bottle of that too. Um, many people who've been doing this anointing of our borders, they have taken a paintbrush with them, and they pour it into a little, little bowl, and they paint the border. They paint the border. So it's, um, it's a beautiful thing to do. Say a prayer over it. Uh, Dutch had a beautiful uh, message this morning, testimonies from people anointing their borders everywhere. But you can use Psalms 91 to say a prayer over your home. You can say a prayer over your home. And all the generations of people that will live in this home, you can just say a prayer. So anointing your home and Tim said last night that he, he was, he felt the Spirit, Holy Spirit, telling him that it's time to anoint our homes and protect our homes from evil spirits that could come in. And I think we have to do it, we have to do it on a regular basis. Hello, Marla. I have a 12-year-old son 
who I want to instill good habits. I'm wondering what are good things for him to do. Right now, he carpet sweeps the bedrooms and takes out the trash. He also does the laundry once a week. His very own little once a week works well. Please let me know if you think this is enough for now. How can I help him to pick up after himself? I just tell him to clean his hot spot. I do it and I'm not a martyr to him. Just want a little advice. You have to help me. You have helped me so very much sending love from Michigan. Here's the deal. Your 12 year old son, he's gonna be 13 soon. And anytime a kid hits 13, everything's out the window. So you have to, your son's 12, he's already doing laundry, he's, uh, you know, you might want to set up some rewards for him, like um, taking our little calendar, I don't have a little calendar to show you, but taking a, a little calendar and putting a star on his calendar every day you do, you check his bedroom at a specific time, let him know that you're, you're going to be coming by and he'll get in the habit of keeping his room clean. You know, the fact that he's doing his own laundry, that's amazing. Justin started doing his own laundry, not because I urged him to do it, because I didn't do it to suit him. And he's a born organized kid. So it was, when he was little and in school, he got three new pairs of jeans for school and sometimes I didn't get them washed on time and he'd have to wear shorts to school. So just know that training up a child, Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old, he won't depart from it. Setting the example in love Setting rewards is really good for children. Finding something they like to do, not something you want them to do. A lot of people uh, get their kids to empty the dishwasher and then they're not happy with it. And then it doesn't get done on time and the dishes pile up in the sink. Don't give your kid a job that if it goes undone is gonna drive you nuts. Take back those jobs and give them something else. Taking the trash out, that's a wonderful thing. It's great. But you got to be willing to do it yourself, too. So you see, check out Camp Going to Want to Fly. A lot of kids are at camp right now. Uh, Pastor Greg's, uh, all, all the children from Global Vision are, there's the Roomba knocking. My Roomba's working while I'm in here working. Uh, Check out Camp Gonna Wanna Fly. Get him to name his room. You know, whatever name he wants to put on his, have him draw uh, his room name and y'all just stick it to the top of his doorway. And then at 10 o'clock every morning or 9 o'clock or 4 in the afternoon, whenever it is, set a time for cabin check. That's what we have in, at camps, cabin check. So we have many people who have used things like washing dishes as a chore, as a punishment. And don't do that to your kids because they're going to wake up one day and they're going to be standing at their kitchen sink doing dishes, crying. For, they don't even know why they're crying. I get this all the time. So please don't give things that keep the house running as punishment. This is not good. But setting up a day for them to do laundry, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Maybe they need a couple of days a week. Swish and swipe, this is great. Kids love to do swish and swipe, even if they're two years old. They love it, I like playing in the toilet. Imagine that. But you gotta make sure it's clean. 
but start before they get to be 12. But at 12, you can still, they're still, they're still babies. They don't like to think that, but they're still babies. And do things in love and do things, make things a game and help them declutter. Um, I was watching, um, catching up with the walkers this morning and mama and the two oldest kids are at church camp and daddy has ransom with him. And so they cleaned out his closet and put a new closet organizer in. And this kid, you would have thought he'd been given a million bucks because he got to help daddy build something and help daddy put it in. He counted his shoes. He gets a lot of hand-me-downs from his cousins and stuff. And he had several pair of cowboy boots that he was so proud of. And he has all his dress shirts that he doesn't wear often because he's got an older brother. So they stay up and out of the way. So getting getting clothes ready for this season coming up of going to school. This is this is fun stuff and it will help them. You know, next week we start our new habit of laundry every day, doing a load of laundry every single day. When we do that, we have to have a place to put our laundry. You don't want it in the laundry basket or you're going to be left with a present in that laundry basket, y'all. So Empty out one drawer for each kid. Each kid in the house, one drawer. Each person in the house, one drawer. And then you may need to label things on the outside with some post-it note tape. It will make a big difference when they know where their stuff is. Put kids going back to school, a great thing to do is to put their whole outfits together. Shorts, shirt, hair bows, underwear, you name it, socks, all in one little packet. One little pack. And then that way, they know, they have everything they need to get dressed. They're not searching for anything. And always tell, you know, tell your kids before bed routine, let's pick out our clothes for tomorrow. And if you've got it put together, you got it all put together. Maybe you take a paper sack and put them all in a paper sack and label it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. There's organizers you can put in the closet. There's organizers you can put in drawers. There are ways to fold clothes up where they're just one little packet. So, so, like packing for vacation, you lay the pants and the shirts on top of each other and you have sleeves hold sticking out and <sighs> there's lots of videos that show how to do this. And you make a, you just roll them up, roll them up. So pick out your clothes for tomorrow. Remember to remind them to do that. You pick your clothes out, they pick their clothes out, and everybody gets dressed in the morning without a lot of muss and fuss. Nobody's hunting for clean socks because they're all clean and in the drawer. Somebody said they would put the things in a mesh bag. Wow, I love that idea. If you buy our purple rags, it comes with a mesh bag. If you buy several sets, you could have five mesh bags to to put their clothes in. Anyway, let's get those habits going. And please don't be a martyr with them. What do you do if you have mommy burnout? Well, you gotta rebuke it in the name of Jesus, start with. I've been a stay-at-home mom for 13 years, and, I, and I'm feeling unfulfilled and tired. I used to enjoy being a stay-at-home mom, but recently I enjoy it less. I tried to shift my attitude and perspective, but I'm still grumpy. Okay, if you know you're grumpy, you can stop being grumpy. It's no excuse. You can stop it. If you have to put tape over your mouth, you can stop it. 
I would prefer to feel grateful, but I'm struggling to do so. My kids are 13 to three years old. With the array of ages to care, to care for their, and there are a lot of different needs to, to be met. And I feel I can go through a 12 hour day and not be left alone for any amount of time. Even at bedtime, my kids won't stop coming out of their rooms for one more sip of water. I am an introvert and need alone time to recharge. Well, you also have, she doesn't say how many kids, but she has kids. And right now, your introvert has to go on, on the back burner, just like many other things we put on the back burner, because we've got, God's given us these children, and you have to get off of your pity party. Yeah, I'm saying it. You have to get off your pity party and realize you're training up children to be productive adults. And if they see you whining about taking care of them, what does that tell them? They're coming out of their room every few seconds because they love you. And you're sitting here feeling sorry for yourself because you don't have any alone time. Y'all, you got to stop this. You got to stop this and you got to ask God to help you. And you got to rebuke the evil spirit that is attacking your love for your children. See it for what it is. See it for what it is. And stop allowing those negative thoughts to run rampant in your head and to make you feel bad. You decided to be a stay-at-home mom 13 years ago. And you had several children. And it, 13, it could be 26 years before you get to stay at home. You're going to be an empty nester before you know it. Ask my son and his wife. They're practically empty nesters this summer. Sarah's off working at camp and Ethan is taking people on on, on tours and uh, camping journeys and they grow up fast. You're going to have plenty of time to decide what you want to be when you grow up after you get these children settled and, and trained up. So folks, quit feeling sorry for yourself. You get, whining doesn't accomplish anything. Where's my no? I got a no whining pen. No whining. Right here, no whining. And if you want to be an introvert, then take some time after they get in the bed. And maybe you need to start your before bed routine right after dinner and get the kids. School is starting soon and they need to have their eight hours, nine hours of sleep. And you can get an extra hour of alone time in if you start getting them to bed a little bit earlier. So... You have a responsibility, and it's those babies. So, folks, let's, let's get one more question. I think we got six this week. I'm new here and can't figure out the decluttering part. Would you give me a rundown on how to go about decluttering my home and explain how it helps with routines. Please teach me how to work it into my day. There's no working it into your day. It's, it's setting an alarm. Oh, I can't pick up my phone and show it to you. It's setting an alarm on my phone that says, okay, do five minutes of decluttering. We play games. We do a 27 fling boogie. That is, run around the house and gather up 27 items to give away. 
Then run around your house and gather up 27 items to throw away. It can be several pieces of paper. It doesn't matter. But we play games. We do a five-minute room rescue. We, we have rules. Don't pull out more than you can put back in five minutes. Clean one drawer at a time. And we break our house into zones. Uh, yesterday on tea time or day before yesterday, one week, we explained the whole system, how it all works, how it all comes together. But the most important part is getting rid of the clutter because when you've got clutter everywhere, it's hard to dust when you've got clutter everywhere. It's hard to dust. It's hard to put things away when clutter is taking over important real estate to get you organized. So stop whining about not knowing how to do something and set an alarm on, on doing it. Five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, five minutes when you get home from work or when, whatever. You can do this. You can do this. And it's going to make your life easier. When you have fewer items to disrupt, let's look at it this way. I heard this last night, and then Patty reinforced it with something she saw from the Cleveland Clinic, or I can't go look at it. But when we get sidetracked, <coughs> when something sidetracks us, like you have a pile of laundry on the couch, well, you can't, you can't take your rubber scrubber and clean the cat hair and dog hair off your couch with, with um, a pile of laundry on the couch. So what do you do? You put it back in the basket, and it sits there and gets wrinkled and all messed up because you didn't fold it as it came out of the dryer. So, folks... You can do this. You can do this. It takes 23 minutes to get back on track when you when something uh, pulls you away from what you were doing. 23 minutes. Can you imagine that? 23 minutes. Don't know why it's 23 minutes, but it happens. It happens, and we we have to stop. We have to stay focused. That's what a timer is so good to stay focused. Don't pick up your phone if it's ringing, unless you see that it's... If at night, when I want to get some things done, I turn my phone off. Turn it all the way off so that I can get some things done. Yep. Please like... Give us a thumbs up, share, click the notification bell for, I don't know where my other one is. I guess I lost it. Click the notification bell for, to be um, notified, notificated as Mark Lowry says that we're going live. Sorry, this was all messed up, but as it is what it is. I'm going to spend a few times to do it now. Principal kicks in. I've already rebooted but I'm going to have to do some updates, I guess, to see what's going on. Well, y'all, be good, kind, and sweet. Father in heaven, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, for all my babies feeling anxious and depressed, please lift that heaviness off of them. Help them to learn how to focus on you, Lord. Re help them to learn to rebuke the evil spirit that makes them feel bad about their families. Help them to do what they need to do. All these things we ask in your son's holy name, the name of Jesus, has so much power if we will use it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I just thought of something else. Oh no, Holy Spirit put it in the... In, uh, my heart, the lady that was feeling sad and needing to be an introvert. You know, when you're an introvert, that means you don't want to be around people. But we all have a mission in life. 
And she got a three-year-old, she says, from 13 to three years old. You know, maybe she has some postpartum depression that she hadn't dealt with. Hormone imbalances and different things. Ask the Lord to heal you. Go to your gynecologist, your OBGYN, and, and get checked out. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. But pray, rebuke, when in doubt, cast it out. And, and we have something to be thankful for. Yesterday, yesterday, Pastor Greg at Global Vision, he was riding his bike, and he goes downtown Nashville, and he's got this little 7-Eleven store. He stops and gets him something to drink. He puts his bike outside, and <clears throat> somebody hit the gas instead of the brake, and he was inside getting a drink, at which point, yeah, you know, he's sweating. He rides his bicycle a whole lot. And he was getting ready to go outside the door, at which point he felt a stream of cold sweat come down his back, and he turned around to grab a napkin off of the stand. And at that time, a car slammed into the door and into his bicycle. A second later, he would have been on that bicycle and been hit by this car. And we're just praising the Lord that the Holy Spirit made him turn around and go get a napkin. Thankful for napkins sitting out, you know. So y'all, slow down. Slow down. Don't be in a hurry about things. Don't be in a hurry. Right now, many of you are, are upset over getting clothes ready for school and all kinds of things. Maybe you just sort out the ones that don't, don't fit. Put together five outfits for school. Just don't burden yourself with trying to get everything put away nicely. Right now, you just need to get five outfits together for school. What are they wearing the first day of school? So y'all, Tuesday, we're going to start Fly Lady Immersion Class. We've named it a lot of things, but it's, it's getting back to basics because we all need it. Send your testimonials to me to flylady at flylady.net about how the system has helped you, helped your children. I need to hear it. Because this is the mission God gave me. So folks, be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself. Be kind to others. Be kind to yourself too. And let that joy and sweetness that comes from the good Lord show the world who you are a child of the Most High, the only living God. I love you all. Thanks for your testimonials. Keep them coming. And we're going to start. Those, you're going to have success stories too. You just got to let go of your perfectionism. I'll see you later. Bye. I don't even know how to turn it off. How do I do it?